Welcome to Kid Missing in TV. Uh, oh my god. Welcome to Punky's World. This might as well be an episode of Kid Missing TV. Um, okay. She yikes. Okay. Um, now, what they did do is they didn't use names, they used occupations to describe people, like the resident manager of the building. Apparently, Vince McMahon was living in a penthouse in her building. And that's how... Janelle Grant met him, <coughs> Mr. The Resident Manager. Um, but it also says that one of our grade school classmates was one of his assistants. So she had, like me, lost both of her parents. And she, well, she had been their caregiver, so she hadn't worked. And she needed to work. So. She was put in contact with McMahon, and things went south from there. Um, oh, my God. Um, one thing that happened was that uh, he coerced her into a into an intimate relationship with him and he would send her these disgusting text messages um, <laughs> I'm gonna try to clean this up re your last picture you need your <clears throat> underclothing taken off <clears throat> and three big blank blank in all three um, openings <laughs> at the same time uh, way up them uh, the biggest of which down her throat it, this is an actual picture of a text I'm not going to show it to you because it's disgusting He talks about climax and doing things. Ugh. Anyway, okay, and he passed his phone around to a bunch of guys in the tech team. There's the text. You can't read it for here, thank God. Uh, they were 12 and they all wanted to be intimate with you. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, he hit wow. And apparently, well, the only other person named as a name in here that I could find was John Laurinaitis, because he's actually named as a defendant. Um, <coughs> there is a wrestler named, well, he's not named as a, in name, he's named as a wrestling superstar or whatever, and from... All of my research, it is my understanding that this person is Brock Lesnar. Um, 
I haven't seen anywhere where it says she slept with said wrestler, just that he would text her and she would he would demand pictures of her and stuff like that. Which makes like no sense because He forced her into threesomes with him and Laurinaitis. For those of you who don't know who John Laurinaitis is, let me try to... Oh, and there was a celebrity doctor, they called him, involved. Lord only knows who that was. Um, Okay, I want to read you all the gifts he gave her to keep her quiet. paying her non-disclosure agreement, which is one of the reasons that she filed the lawsuit. Um, uh, despite assurances from McMahon that he would cover her medical care and the cost associated with her tax liability for the million dollar payment, he has reviews, refused to do so. Why was he paying for her medical care? What was he paying for? Okay, she was having sex with one of the superstars. Hmm. I don't know who she was. Okay. The gifts provided to Ms. Grant included ones purchased by McMahon and expensed them to the WWE. What that means is when you're a big shot in a company, you get what's called an expense account. It's supposed to be used to take prospective clients out to dinner and um, people you want to work with to events and things like that. That's what it's supposed to be for. Um, <clears throat> he spent, he did alternative clinical medical care at medical and cosmetic services for her, clubhouse access, and tickets to the Belmont Stakes, which is a horse race. It's one of the uh, Triple Crown. WrestleMania private full day transportation and premium tickets. A $2,000 Nordstrom gift card, a massive box Godiva with chocolate. Examples of items received by Ms. Grant from Mr. McMahon in 2020 include the following. $20,000 towards surgery paid directly to a surgeon's office. Pearl diamond pave lariat necklace from Betteridge in Greenwich, Connecticut. A blue cashmere knee-length cardigan from Nordstrom. Blue Burberry check cashmere scarf from Nordstrom. Blue cashmere fur hat, Nordstrom. <coughs> Gray cashmere shawl from Nordstrom. Selene sunglasses from Nordstrom. Cable knit throw blanket. And a large bouquet of flowers delivered approximately every other week. Examples of the items received by Ms. Grant from Mr. McMahon in 2021 included the following. A 2022 BMW 430XI. 
$5,000 gift card at Vampire Spar. Hold on. Ow. Back. That was just my neighbor delivering my side dish. Baked beans. <laughs> Yum. That'll go perfectly with my fish. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I? Where, where was the page? Oh, it's way over there. Excuse me. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now. $5,000 gift certificate to Lanfiere Spa, two private chef catered dinners in McMahon's condo, gold and diamond pave paper clip necklace from Betteridge. I guess that must be a good jewelry store. $15,000 in Bloomingdale's gift cards, food assortment display, and antique tea ceremony set from Saudi Arabia, and a large bouquet of flowers delivered approximately every other week. Um, oh boy. Sounds like that's good luck, doesn't it? No, it's not. Um, She was called McMahon's bitch. Okay. Wow. Um, okay, this is a breakdown of the allegations. Um, easiest way to do it in the least explicit way, okay? Anyway, um, so these are the basic allegations laid out. McMahon sexually assaulted Miss Grant on numerous occasions. He was aggressive during sexual encounters to the point of causing her pain, including when she tried to stop. McMahon objectified and trafficked Miss Grant. He demanded that Miss Grant engage in threesomes with other men and that she send explicit photographs for him to share with other men, despite Miss Grant on multiple occasions explaining that she was hesitant to obey, and all while McMahon controlled Miss Grant's job security. McMahon regularly humiliated and degraded Miss Grant. As one example, McMahon um, How do I put this? He did 
a number two on her head and made her continue have, having sex with his physical therapist, as the person was called, while he went into the shower. Um, he created an environment of fear and secrecy by warning Ms. Grant of the grave consequences of not being discreet about their sexual encounters, while at the same time sharing the explicit photographs of her with others inside and outside the company, and directing her to sexually service other WWE affiliated individuals. McMahon sent perverted messages to Ms. Grant that involved the latter being subjected to intimate scenarios involving extreme pain and humiliation, including during instances when Ms. Grant clearly attempted to avoid a text message exchange that was sexually charged. McMahon would push back, question the plaintiff, and or become cold or distant if Ms. Grant pushed back or ignored his sexually charged messages. McMahon promised other men that the plaintiff would do anything they desired and provided the plaintiff's personal cell number without her permission for the purposes of performing <coughs> and or providing humiliating sexual acts, such as exploitative pictures and videos, including of her doing a number one. Mr. McMahon ordered Ms. Grant to report all such exchanges to him. Wow. Um, yeah. That's horrendous. Um, but I assure you, that's just the... Uh... Yeah, I'm comfortable. That's my... He, um, he used her job against her, basically. What I want to know, um, and I don't doubt the things she was saying as far as what he did. I, I don't. My, I have a couple issues here. <coughs> Looking at this as someone who would be the average person on a jury. Okay, one thing that I'm looking at, if she had been taking care of her parents, she did not have a job, which apparently she was a licensed paralegal, um, so she did go to school at some point, and her parents went bankrupt, presumably from medical, um, and lost their home, which doesn't make any sense because you can protect your home in a bankruptcy, but, um, <coughs> you cannot include your house in a bankruptcy, and most people don't. <coughs> and she was living in this apparently posh apartment building in Greenwich, Connecticut. And we're not talking on the other side of Greenwich. We're talking on the side of Greenwich that Vince McMahon lived in. In the building he lived in. Where'd that money come from? For the rent in that building. What? <laughs> she must have had a job. Was she working as a paralegal for a law firm? I mean, she had money from somewhere to live in that building before she ever met McMahon. So for this woman to say her parents were bankrupt, then they died, she had nothing. Uh, no, I don't believe that. Because she was living in a high-rise in Greenwich, Connecticut. Same high rise of Vince McMahon was living at. <coughs> she had money. 
I'm not saying that excuses what happened. I'm saying that there are some things that make me go, huh? Right here, it says, struggling financially and after years of caregiving, it says she was unemployed and her family home was lost through her parents' bankruptcy. No, I think her family home was lost. The house that her parents lived in was probably lost. And she says she had non paying work in the building for people, and that's how she built her resume. Uh, doesn't make sense either, but anyway. Um, uh, I think her parents' house was lost because they were probably in care. And unfortunately, Medicare, if you have a house, we'll take it to pay all the bills they paid for you. Um, that is probably what happened, unfortunately. Before they ever started going down the road of needing all that help, they should have put it in her name. <coughs> If, if she was struggling financially before she met McMahon, but was living in that nice building, who was paying for her to live there? If she truly was unemployed, who was paying for her to live there before she met McMahon? Was she involved in a similar situation with someone else that was paying for her to live there? She's going to have a problem here in that a lot of the acts were, I hate like hell to say this, but were technically consented to. I think that things went too far at times, but she consented to a lot of it. So she's going to have an uphill climb um, as far as that goes. Do I think there were times that were unconsented? Or I think there was implied consent meaning that I think he just assumed that once things started, there was consent, period. And that's not really how it works, but that there was blanket consent. That's, um, and, and maybe some guys do feel that way, you know? Once you're in a relationship with someone, there's blanket consent, and there isn't. Which is why, up until the 80s, <coughs> excuse me, in the majority of states, a husband could not be guilty of raping his wife because it was implied consent. There was blanket consent. They don't view it that way anymore, but I think a lot of people view it that way. And I think that 
the reason that Vince McMahon went outside his marriage was to do this disgusting stuff that he knew Linda would not do. Uh, she's talking about human resources. Now, I'm sorry, but some of the things that she alleges in this suit, another problem she's going to have <coughs> is that from day one, she should have gone to the police. And how did she, well, this law firm probably took it on to, um, Um, and for those of you who don't know who John Laurinaitis is, um, he was out of town in relations for WWE for a while, um, and he was on screen and whatnot. Before that, um, he wrestled under the name Johnny Ace. Um, <coughs> He, um, my friend, his, best, or most high profile, anything, was with Shane Douglas as the dynamic dudes, <coughs> where they feuded with the Midnight Express. Um, He also happens to be the younger brother of the warrior animal, Joe Arnitis. Um, God rest his soul. Um, and Joe, animals. <laughs> Joe slash Animal's son has played for two different teams in the NFL. Um, and these are things that she better consider that McMahon's lawyer, especially if it's Jerry McDevitt, Jerry McJerk, <laughs> I don't like him anymore, um, is going to ask her is, how were you living in that building? And all of those things.
he was paying for a half a million dollars at a time on the non-disclosure agreement. Wow. For those who don't know what an NDA or non-disclosure agreement is, it's an agreement between two parties, usually a business agreement, where generally speaking, in this case it's not, but you leave a company um, you work in the office of a company and the non-disclosure agreement you don't usually get paid for it what it is is it protects the company um, say for example you work in corporate at Hershey's and you know their recipe for chocolate okay and you know it makes their chocolate just a little bit better just as an example and you go okay and you you leave the company they may have you sign a non-disclosure agreement meaning that you're not allowed to disclose anything you know about the company particularly to your next employer because they don't know that you're not going to go you may also have a non-compete for a certain period of time so you can't go from Hershey's to Eminem Mars the next day or Cadbury you know <coughs> but if you do happen to start working for Eminem Mars or Cadbury you can't give them information about Hershey's inner workings That's kind of, it's simplistic, but that's kind of what these agreements are made for. They're to protect the company from another company getting their secrets, more or less. Um, the same thing if you work, you know, in a wine company, you know, um, if you're working for Mondavi and you go work for, you know, another company, they don't want you to, Say this is how we how they grew their grapes. This is what they fertilized them with. You know what I mean? Giving the competition your secrets. It's about exposing secrets, and in this case, the relationship with McMahon. But that's what a non-disclosure agreement is. You agree not to expose the company's secrets. Um, you may also have a non-compete clause. Um, most wrestlers have those built into their contracts so that for a certain number of days after their contract expires, they can't just hop to the other company. Um, and they may have those in contracts for upper management in certain industries so that the president of, or the vice president of some section in Hershey's does it immediately if he leaves the company go over and get a job with him in Mars it's just an example you know I'm just using these companies as an example because they're com big shot competing companies same thing if if you work for PepsiCo as a big shot and you, you knew all their secrets you know and uh, recipes and dirty laundry and whatever else you'd probably have to sign some sort of agreement against giving that information to um, <coughs> Coca-Cola if you went and got a job at Coca-Cola you probably also would have a period of no compete where you wouldn't be allowed to get a job with the competition for a certain amount of time. So you couldn't go immediately the day after you left Pepsi to Coke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, same idea. And it would go both ways. Coke to Pepsi, m and Mars to Hershey. It would go the same way. So, that's simplistic. But it's It's to protect interests, I guess. Um, there have been instances 
where a no compete clause wasn't written into the contract in wrestling, which caused a mess. Uh, Lex Luger, he never put a no compete clause in his WCW contract. Or WWE. WWE. And he <laughs> ended up on Raw and Nitro on the same night. Because one was taped and one was alive. But that should never happen in wrestling. Because there should always be, it's usually a 90 day non compete. Sometimes they're longer than that. But um, typically they're 90 days in wrestling. I don't know about the corporate world. Excuse me. So, yeah. And I have a question for Vince McMahon. Did he not think she might save those text messages? Just saying. I think any woman who's doing what she was doing is going to save the messages. Because let's face it, those messages, if they can be authenticated as being from him, which I have no reason to believe they can't be, because um, the lawyers wouldn't have put them directly in the filing. Um, Those messages could have been used for extortion. You know? She could have just as easily said, I'm going to send copies, you know, of your text messages to your wife. You know? Um, which she could have done. Um, Working in corporate, she would have had access, <coughs> especially working in the legal department. And even later on, working for Laurinaitis in talent relations, she would have had access if she was careful in the office to Linda McMahon's information. Linda McMahon worked for the company. At one time, she ran the company. So, her information would be there. Or, while well, Vince McMahon was showering after an encounter, go on his phone and get Linda's number. The fact that none of this happened makes 
me wonder I just have a lot of questions on both sides, okay? I'm not I'm not in any way saying she's lying, okay? I'm saying that there's a lot of questions that need to be answered on both sides of this giant pile of paper. She's going to have a hard time proving that. She's saying that the WWE news events traveled all over the country looking for women to exploit and promise employment to women. Yada yada, as <laughs> Seinfeld would say. So she's going to have a tough time proving that unless she's got some witnesses. Vince McMahon admits to having affairs. Of course, Vince has a problem because he says he hasn't had an affair in six years. <clears throat> Except this went on from 2019 to 2022. Which... is between five and two years, between two and five years ago, so, oops, um, thank you for joining me, oh, oh goodness gracious, this was a long video, anyway, um, and we'll get things edited, <laughs> uh, Oh my goodness. And up on screen. So, like I said, thank you so much for joining me. I am going to go make my uh, fish and enjoy homemade baked beans with it. Mm. Um, God bless you. Please subscribe to both channels and hit those bells. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. God bless you.